Accessibility tools. These are some of those great tools that you can provide for your students to make learning more equitable, to make it accessible to everybody. And the great thing is, is that there's so many of them that are available and they can be used by your students without people even realizing that you're using them so they can get that extra support that they need. And that is exactly what we're going to be talking about in our video today. We're gonna to be sharing a bunch of these tools that you can use in your own classroom. There's lots of it that you can use absolutely for free. And so we're gonna be chatting about that. Holly's got her hair all straightened out and ready to go now. Bangs are on point. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much for joining us in this video um, produced by Online Learning Ideas. My name is Matt Miller. This is Holly Clark to my left to your right. And um, we've got all sorts of good stuff to share with you. Um, we've got really three main ones that we're going to be talking about today that you can start using with your class right away. So if you're watching this on the replay, if you're finding this on, on YouTube or wherever, Welcome, we're so glad that you're taking some time to take a look at this and you're gonna come away with lots of really good ideas. And if you're watching this on Facebook or on YouTube live, welcome, we're so glad to see you here. Um, would love for you to check in in the comments and let us know who you are and what you do. So name, location, role, that kind of thing. We'll do a little roll call of who's here. And then what's great about these videos is we can pull in your ideas too. So if there's something that you do with any of these tools, if you have other tools that you want to share, um, yeah. we're definitely happy to take your ideas and share them with everybody. So my name's Matt Miller. I'm the author of Ditch That Textbook, high school Spanish teacher for more than 10 years. Um, written a handful of books and now do professional development full time. And Holly, you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? Yeah. And I love seeing people come in, but um, I'm from San Diego. I was a full-time teacher for 20 years. Ah, that's a lot of years, but I, I loved all of them. It just makes me old. And uh, now I am doing infused classroom things and I'm super excited to see who's here. Yeah, well, let's start going down the list. There's Monica Spillman, who's from Chattanooga, Tennessee. I know that because she told me. <laughs> she loves accessibility tools and uses them. Hello to Justine Wright. She's here from Alberta, Canada. Good to see you. We've got Thomas Varnum, who's here from, I'm going to guess that's Tingsboro, Massachusetts Public School. Good work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There's Cindy. She's here from Maryland. So it's good to see her familiar face from Twitter. Tanya's here. Tanya, Tanya, K5 Innovation Specialist. I bet one of those was correct. Um, we've got yeah. Dina checking in on Facebook from New Hampshire. Good to see you. Louise is here from Texas. Hello, hello. Donna is here. She's a library tech specialist from Massachusetts. Wow, Massachusetts is representing here. This is good. Um, there's uh, Dina again telling us what she does. Uh, oh, nailed it on the, the name. That was cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Thomas. And then Liz is here from Indiana. And we've also got PJ from Southern California. All right. Excellent. So we got lots of folks here. And if you're checking in, please do um, feel free to throw in ideas, throw in your suggestions, your questions, whatever. If you're watching this on the replay, you're going to get to see all of the stuff that they ask. So hopefully they'll be asking the same kind of questions and making the same kind of suggestions that that you might. So yeah, um, I want to say, Monica yes. DM'd me after one of our shows and they were doing past the sketch note and she gave me the um, video for it. So people share stuff with us and we learn. So continue to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, absolutely. So um, with that all in mind, I'm having a little bit of trouble loading my slides here, Holly. So oh, what's that? Oh, well, we can wait or I can get started. No, that's okay. Yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. We can, that's the, that's the mark of a good speaker or presenter, right? Is that you can just keep plowing forward if you don't have your slides. So, yeah, um, so I will here. tell you that... What's that? We have someone here from Egypt. I think we've had that before, but I love it. Oh, excellent. There you go. Very good. Awesome. Well, welcome. And guess what? That was just enough time for me to get my slides up. So uh, <laughs> here's what we're going to do in this video today. We're going to identify some tools to improve accessibility in the classroom and then share how these tools can help students and improve classroom equity. And so let's start right off, Holly, with this question, um, which I would love to hear your take on. And then if you're listening to this in the video, would love to throw your ideas in your comments up onto the screen too. So why is accessibility important in the first place? 
for me because it opens the door for all learners. But one of the things we have to do is reframe what accessibility means because as a student, I was a really good student. I got all A's and whatever, but I, I still needed accessibility tools and no one ever thought about that for me because I met all the criteria, but I needed to hear books rather than read them. It just, it sits better with my mind. And uh, we weren't thinking about it that way. So first it opens the doors and it also re we need to reframe which doors open, I guess. How mm -hmm. about you do that? Yeah, I think for me, it's so important because a lot of times there are roadblocks and barriers to learning with some of our students and sometimes we don't even see them. Mm -hmm. And so whenever we assume, whenever we assume that students are all taken care of and that everything is equitable, everything's on a fair level, I think someone in our classroom is usually at a disadvantage. And whenever we make some of these accessibility tools available, especially when we make them available to everybody, there's less of a stigma behind it, I think, because um, whenever everybody's got access to them, whenever any, everybody is able to use them, it's basically like saying, hey, you're not weird or different or bad for using these. These are just things that can help you out, um, whether it has to do with reading, whether it has to do with listening, whether it has to do with um, you know, typing or creating or whatever. And whenever everybody has access to them, then all of a sudden there are less barriers to, um, to learning. And that's really what we're shooting for, I think. Yeah. So you and I are wearing accessibility tools right now. Oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> that's true so, right here. Yeah. And, yeah. And as you, for me, it's cause I'm getting older, but for, you know, like, and I need accessibility to small print now. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right, exactly. No, I'm with you on that one. Um, loving some of the comments that are coming in here. We'd love to keep throwing some more of these up on the screen. Accessibility is important to address the achievement gap. Yes, absolutely. And then Monica says, same for me, Holly, it was visuals for me. I was gifted, but still needed that for comprehension. Thankfully, I was in California and it was allowed. And see, I think that's a really important point that sometimes even when students are labeled as gifted or whenever we think that they're doing just fine in our classroom, sometimes they need some support in different areas. Just because you have that gifted label or just because you have a good grade doesn't mean that all of the holes are filled in, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So with that in mind, and again, if any of you are watching and you uh, continue to have thoughts about why accessibility is important, keep throwing those in and we'll keep putting them up on the screen. And we have lots of tools that can increase accessibility. And Holly, isn't it such a great time that we live in where we have um, some of these things that we can provide for our students? So amazing. So I didn't yeah. have this when I was coming up as a teacher. I didn't have, well, I didn't, we didn't really even have technology at first. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what we want to do today is share with you some of the tools that we're excited about when it comes to um, creating accessible classrooms, you know, accessible learning. And so we have a handful of them that we'd like to share with you and want to just dig right into the first one. This is a big one for both of us, I know, and that's immersive reader, right, Holly? Yes. And um, we're, I'm going to show it. Am I going to go right in and show it right now? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Go ahead and show it. So yeah, okay. go ahead and start pulling it up. So, and Matt's going to show you a slide later that shows you all of the ways that you can have immersive reader in some apps, but I just want to show you what it is. We kind of talked about it a little bit on Friday, but I'm going to go in to comparing it with something else called text help as we go through this. So it won't spend a lot of time since we did do it on, um, it was either, I think it was Friday. So if you're in a Microsoft Word document, or if you're just on Chrome, like I am, there's kind of an unofficial Chrome, uh, uh, extension that you can get to have this with everything. But I'm going to take one of my favorite uh, stories and I'm going to give it kids accessibility to it by going to view and then going to immersive reader. So if you can see this right here, it's going to change the screen and it's going to now um, read that for a student. So let me just do that for a second. What they don't understand about birthdays and what they never tell you is so I'll stop. And what we saw on Friday and what we're going to see again today is that I can come over here to the text preferences and I can do something that's really important. I can make this bigger 
for whoever needs it bigger. And there are plenty of kids with visual processing problems. And a lot of people don't even know they have visual processing problems. I feel like because I'm from California, we're a little bit, you know, we're known for being a little bit out there. The kids know about the visual processing. That means they have things like they need colored backgrounds because they can see it better. And it, they have what's called um, a visual, um, it's when your eyes are tired and putting in a different background helps with that. I had a, um, a, a niece who had real problems here and had to have these overlays she put on top of things that she read and they, and it was a um, violet overlay. And when she did that, her, she could read much, much longer. And for some reason she took in the information better. So immersive reader has that in there. It also has three different fonts that you can choose from. And um, like, I like to make fun of Comic Sans when teachers use that, but it <laughs> happens to be one of the ones that helps kids eyes um, not get as fatigued. So I can do that. I can increase the spacing right here and make it a little better for some of those kids who need it. And so that's really neat. Um, I can also come over here and I can do, if I'm teaching language arts, which I taught, I can look at just nouns, like which of these are the nouns to help kids see that. Um, I can look at the verbs, the adjectives, the adverbs, lolly, 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 get your adverbs here. And um, I can even show the labels. So let me take off the adverbs because it gets a little um, crazy looking. But if I just did nouns, I can see those there. I can also do it by syllables. And if I want to turn that on, um, you can see that the syllables are broken up to help kids read birthday, you expect. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then if I come over to the little book icon, which is reading preferences, for me, this is a big deal because of where I live. And I'll explain this in a second. But if I want um, and I want to see what this means, and I, I'm going to go back actually and take off the syllables because that's too messy for my personal learning style. But if I want to see what a birthday means, I can click on it and I get a picture dictionary, which is really, really important for kids. Yeah. And that picture dictionary can even be brought into things and, and you can keep a running picture dictionary if you wanted to. But here's what's important to me, Matt, is that I can choose to translate this. So I, mm -hmm. from being from Southern California, I have a lot of kids. I even have kids who used to come into the country for class during the day because they're, they had citizenship in both places. And um, or, or would come a lot. I have a lot of kids from Mexico City. Uh, I used to in my class. Um, and this can allow them to come over and translate. So they read it in English, but maybe they really don't know what it means. They can translate it into their um, their language. But here's what's important. I can go down to Spanish and I can get a Latin American version which is probably the pronunciation, I can get a Mexico version. So for me, super important so that I have these different mm -hmm. Spanishes. And um, same mm -hmm. thing happens when you're talking about Chinese. And um, so that's really cool and important for me. I can do the translation by word if I wanted to, and I can do it by the entire document. But more importantly, Matt, I can send it home to parents who need mm -hmm. that translation. I'm obviously not going to send home 11 to them, but maybe I teach them how to take some things I send home from class and translate those or translate them myself and then send them home. So yeah. immersive reader for the win on that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of things you, uh, you mentioned that I wanted to highlight a little bit. Actually, one of them, um, one of them is the line focus. I don't know if you touched on that one, I but that's right actually, there on your screen. So yeah, this is this is one that I think is huge. And here's why, um, you know, sometimes students look at an entire page of text and it can be kind of daunting and it can also be distracting when there's all of those other words and they realize they have so much. But when they turn on line focus, it just focuses down on that one line. I mean, you know, sometimes you'll see students. Now I don't I've, I've not been trained in reading or anything, so I'm just going off of my own experience. Uh -huh. But, you know, sometimes you'll track with your finger. Sometimes you'll block things out and um, it can kind of remove some of those, um, you know, remove some of those distractions that are mm -hmm. that are present. And For then ADD. the other thing that you talk. Sorry. For ADD kids, it's really important. 
Mm -hmm. Both your yeah. and, and the line focus. Yeah. And I remember with my own kids, um, how important the syllables part would have been because, um, you know, I know whenever you're trying to sound things out, you're trying to sound words out. If you've got the syllables broken up, it's got to be so much easier. Again, like I said, I've not been trained in literacy or anything, but that's just for me as a dad, I know has been, has been really, really helpful. Um, so those are, those are a couple of things that I think are, are really great. And, um, Holly, are we ready to show them where they can find it, where they can get it? Um, so Immersive Reader comes in every Microsoft product, and then Matt's going to show you. But I just want to tell you, in any Microsoft product, you go to View, and Immersive Reader is going to be there. And then, Matt, why don't you go ahead and tell them about all the places that are amazing. <laughs> right, yeah. So these are some of the ones. If you if you look here, you'll see that you know it's definitely available in OneNote. Um, I, I tell you what, if your students have the ability to use OneNote, you know, if they have um, if they have a Microsoft account, they're able to to get into it, or you know, there's a variety of ways that they can get access to it. OneNote really is my favorite note taking app, and you're able to pull text, you're able to pull images of text, which you're going to get to in a second, um, into OneNote, and then you're able to use Immersive Reader to be able to read it. Um, of course, it is available in Word and in Outlook as well for reading your emails, and then. Um, Microsoft also has partnerships with a bunch of different other tools. So we put some of our favorites up here, including Wakelet, which is a way to pull in lots of collections of different items that you find out on the web. Um, you've got Buncee, uh, which is a great visual presentation tool, Wonderopolis for student um, exploration, Nearpod and Pear Deck are both for um, interactive presentations. Flipgrid for video responses. And then of course there's Flocabulary, which has all sorts of fun ways to engage kids in vocabulary. Um, great question. Oh, we do. Is yeah. that this yes. one right here? Does Google that's have anything it. similar for Chromebooks? So you may or may not know, I'm, um, in fact, I just got the edited version in my email today, but I'm writing the Chromebook Infused Classroom. So of course I've got to talk about ways that we can get this into the Chromebooks. And mm -hmm. so um, Monica, you take us right into our next thing where we're going to look at this from a Chrome way and from a Google way. But also I want to point out that what I'm going to show you is um, a Chrome extension. And in case you didn't know, in case you're a Microsoft person, Microsoft Edge is built on Chromium. And Chromium, and so this, whatever I show you can also be used in Edge, but um, this is for the Chromebook folk in the audience. So I'm gonna head over to this, and Matt, I'm gonna need you to tell me if you can see it. I'm gonna go over to a school account that I have that happens to have this. Now, let me tell you that this is called um, text help, and this is the read write version. And for um, teachers, this is free, but for students, um, some parts are free, but you have to get uh, um, this bot for your Chromebooks. But if I were telling people to have extensions for Chromebooks, this would be number one or number two. I, I would fight back and forth with Screencastify because I find Screencastify so important. But so this is called Read Write. And here I am in a Google Doc. I'm doing the same thing because I wanted to show you the difference. I'm looking at um, 11 by Sandra Cisneros. I can do the same exact kind of thing by reading this. Let me what do they that. don't understand about birthdays and what they never. I can change the language in both programs, something I didn't do with Immersive Reader. But I want you to see all the different tools that you can do up here. I was um, going through this a second ago with Matt, and I was like, what? That's so cool, because I had forgotten about a couple of the things. So just like um, uh, Immersive Reader, I can get a picture dictionary. So the birthday comes over here. But here's where it goes. It gets a little cool. I can um, bring that over and I have to find it. Here it is. I can bring this over into a vocabulary journal and it opens a new document where I can start to put in all of those words that I'm starting to learn as a student, which I think is pretty cool. Of course, you can also do that with Immersive Reader and OneNote. But we have that ability with this 
with text help and this read write extension. And so you know, this read write extension is this purple thing up in the corner next to a screencast of by in the upper right hand corner. So if you want to know what it looks like. And these are the extensions that this school district in Yellowknife. So I know we have an Albertan in the house. Um, this is from Yellowknife Canada where I work with them on a long term contract. So um, these are the ones that they chose. Um, I want to come over here and show you that I can, um, that's the dictionary, sorry, I did the picture dictionary. This is reading it to me. But um, this is like a game changer for me. This takes it, takes the file, 11 by Sandra Cisneros, and changes it, changes it into an MP3 format so that kids can take it with them on a bus or in their car and have it read. Like, game changer to me. I love this. So all I do is do this. It's going to, um, in a minute, come up and tell me that it's making a file. And it downloads it. If you see at the bottom of my Chrome, area i have an audio maker mp3 and it, it's gonna have the computer voice reading that for me so i mean pretty cool right matt yeah yeah i also have the ability to do a web search based on some of this stuff but um i can also do a talk and type so let me go ahead and pretend that i'm saying i'm sandra cisneros and i want to dictate in so I get this uh, thing and you can see that it's putting it in and I, uh, I um, click off and now it's not doing it. So it has the ability to dictate for kids who need that. So does um, Immersive Reader or not Immersive Reader, but so does um, the tools of Microsoft. So both mm -hmm. have that. Um, I have the ability also to do translation. I will say that I think the translation in Immersive Reader is a little bit uh, meatier and better like i can't do a mexico spanish translation here but i can translate and send home to parents now check this out matt and i'm sure you're aware of this but i can highlight so let's say i find places where it's a simile and um i don't have that right now so i'm just going to pretend this is a simile and i highlight that in yellow and then I find where, because this particular story has a lot of similes and metaphors. And let's say I find another place where it's a metaphor, even though this is actually a simile right here. <laughs> um, but pretend. And now I have uh, my, my pink and my, I have my pink ones for my similes and I have my yellow ones for my metaphors. I can come over here and I can collect them. And on this, I can give them... Um, I can say I want to just do these. I press OK. And then over uh, in either yeah, a new document, all of those things get brought in. So what if I had done, let's say, a topic sentence in yellow, and I had done the things that were supporting that topic sentence in pink, and so I could see it really easily on my screen. Or There's many things I can do with that um, ability to bring in all those highlights. Um, let me go back to 11. I can also come over here and I can build a, that vocabulary. I can see that vocabulary I've done, but I can do this voice note. So let's say I'm reading and I want to remember that this is my favorite simile right here, this grown up um, part. So I can come over here to a vo voice note. I can say, hey, don't forget, this is your favorite simile. Later when you write the story, um, bring this in as an example and I can stop and then I can insert. Now watch this. When I insert this, and I've always been fond of this with an um, extension called Talk and Comment, but when I come over here, here's my little voice note, but do you see that? It goes to play. And so not only can I do a voice note, but I can leave a voice note for students to help them, like if I'm going into their reading, they leave little voice notes. I love that. And then I can, as a student, I can practice reading this aloud. So I'm going to click on this. And this is going to get fluency for me. So I can get fluency over time. Oh, we couldn't find any text to read. Sorry. I need to tell it to read this text. OK, that I'm going to read this text. I come over here, and I'm going to record myself reading this. And when I think it's good and I'm ready, I can share this with my teacher. So she has and I have. Um, a snippet of fluency that I can use later in um, 
in any of our reading records. So read write is part of the text health umbrella and inside of the text help umbrella and I'm going to come back to um, the screen so you can take that off if you want inside of the read write uh, I'm sorry text help umbrella also are math ones which are called equatio and desmos mm -hmm. and I believe desmos is part of I could be wrong if you're out there and your math teacher tell me if I'm wrong but the for sure equatio which um, helps kids uh, with all kinds of math things. Both Matt and I are not math people, but that's something if you go to YouTube and you just type in Equatio, uh, what is it? Someone will come up with a two minute tutorial mm -hmm. on what it is. Yep, yep, absolutely. Um, I gotta say one of, the, one of the things that I love about so many of these tools when it comes to immersive reader, when it comes to text help, um, really any of these is that if students get access to these, um, what they can do is if they if they know how to use them, even if they're just working on their own. I mean, this especially goes, I think, for middle level and high school kids, but even older elementary kids um, and that, you know, your elementary students, um, they can they they may, really may surprise you. Um, but whenever they've got it on their screen and if they're working alone, let's imagine that all the students are kind of working independently. What they can do is. You know, if they've got a set of earbuds, they go and they plug those earbuds in and they pull up some text on their screen and they just bring up immersive reader or they bring up text help. And all of a sudden, boom, that can help work them through things. And it's not like, you know, it comes through on their speakers and it's loud and everybody's hearing it. Or it's not like an aide comes over and has to help them read through things on their screen. Yeah. Now they're on their own. They're independently working through the text and they're able to learn it on their own, which is so, so cool. I think. And they can translate if they need to, because right. we've always been like, don't translate all English all the time. It's not, it's not how people learn. Right. So right. Translate. Yep. Absolutely. Um, Cindy jumped in and wanted yeah. to help us a little bit with Equatio. She says it can help students become independent with distance learning and math and science. For Equatio for Google is an easy to use extension in Chrome. It's a perfect partner for Google Docs, plus sheets, forms, slides, lets you add mathematical equations, formulas, and more to documents with a click. Input with a keyboard, handwriting recognition with your touchscreen or touchpad, voice dictation guesses what you're typing, like predictive text. So that's good yeah. stuff. Thank you. Thank you. There, there we go. We had an expert in the in the house that that was watching. So and um I just want to give a shout out to John Stevens, who wrote um, Table Talk Math and sh um, some chef math book as well. I forget the name. But in Chromebook Infused Classroom, because I'm not a math teacher, he helped me with the math portion of that. And so, like, that's exactly what we went through. And it was so cool. Yep. Yep. Okay. Holly, it's my turn. Oh. <laughs> I got a couple of things that I, that I want to share real fast. Um, one of them, this was something that we were going to talk about as we wrapped up with um, Immersive Reader, but we jumped right over to the um, text help really quick and we missed it. So this was the thing that I wanted to share. Um, this this piece, if um, if students have access to Office Lens, and you know, one of the easiest ways probably to use this is with a mobile device. And so, um, What's great about Office Lens is that you can take any document, you can take a page in a book, you can even take a whiteboard and take a picture of it through Office Lens and then send it right to OneNote. And whenever it's within OneNote, OneNote is able to read the text on the screen, read the text on the image, and then it's able to dictate it to students. And so you can basically take any you know, document, any notes, anything that you can find on a whiteboard, like the whiteboard right behind me, it's that way. Um, you can take a picture of it and you can put it into OneNote and have it dictated. So that's super, super cool. The other thing that I wanted to share real quick too, as we're starting to wrap up here, is that if you wanna use Immersive Reader, and your students have Chromebooks. Uh, this is a really easy way to get it through the web. Now, um, I will mention that 
um, Microsoft Edge, I believe, does have uh, the ability to use some of the uh, immersive reader functions. But if you want to use it, ah, there's a question right there. This is exactly what I'm getting to Louise. Is there something similar in Google? Yes, that's what I'm getting ready to show you right now. Um, if you want to use immersive reader on the Chrome browser, the Chrome browser is what you use in a Chromebook. And, um, you know, that's, that's what you use for, for a lot of these um, Google type products. Um, immersive reader can be used in Google Chrome. So this is a Chrome extension. It says use immersive reader on websites unofficial. This was basically a developer who just wanted to take the immersive reader API you know, an API is just a way that, you know, two services talk to each other. They wanted to take Immersive Reader and see if he could put it into a Chrome extension. And so kind of like on a weekend, he set this up to see if it would work. And um, it does. I mean, it, it really, um, it works just as if Immersive Reader was plugged into Chrome. So if you use this Chrome extension, that's going to, um, that's going to give you a lot of that same functionality. So there's that. Um Monica also mentioned, have you seen how Google Keep can grab text from an image? Yeah. yeah. So if you're not using Office Lens and you want to use Google Keep instead, Google Keep is kind of like your, um, you know, like a, a simple note-taking app within the, the Google ecosphere. And so you take a picture, stick it into Google Keep, and it can grab that text. And then, of course, you could use that text right within, right, right within um, text help or, you know, a variety, a variety of tools. So wanted to make sure that we mentioned um, both of those because those those work really nicely with this, too. Uh -huh. So with that in mind, we did have a couple of questions come up that I thought I would throw in here. These were a little bit earlier. Um there's that same question again. Does Google have anything similar for those that are using Chromebooks? The other thing that I thought I would mention too is that Google does have a whole bunch of stuff built in to the, um, you know, built in as far as Chromebooks and Chrome. Um, you know, so you've got visual clarity, you've got screen magnifier, you've got a screen reader, high contrast mode. There's a whole bunch of those that are that are available also. In fact, I'm going to take this comment and throw it or sorry, take this link and throw it into the comments so that if you want to dig a little more deeply into that, it's it's easy for you to do. So we did have that. Um, yes, Holly? I just want to give one last thing since we have Chromebook people in here. I put it in the private chat, but I have a link to um, like my newsletter where all of the stuff that I'm doing around Chromebooks goes into. And um, so if you want to join that newsletter and as the Chromebook Infused Classroom comes out, um, happy to... Uh, let you know more about it in previews. So just join that for the Chromebook stuff. Sorry, Matt, I just wanted to make sure since we have all these Chromebook peeps in here. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, absolutely. So that's there. So let's look and see. We had another question in here. Here's one right here from Donna. She says, does Immersive Reader have a dyslexic font? And you know, this actually came up um, in another video that, that we had. So it doesn't have an official dyslexic font. Um, the ones that are available are the ones that are available. So, um, but I know Microsoft is available, or sorry, is aware of this request. And so, you know, this is on their, their list of um, things to consider for, for future updates. So, all right, let's see if we've got any other last questions. I don't see any. Um, Holly, do you have anything else to, to throw in here as we wrap this up? No, just super excited that this is now available for kids on whatever device they have. So it's no one's left out here. So it's mm -hmm. equity, access, inclusion at its best. It's, yep. and it's built in, it's mainstream, it's non-stigmatizing, and they're free. Except for text help, not all of the features are free, but right now it's free for during COVID. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, so that sort of wraps things up for us here. Um, for those of you that joined us live, thank you so much for joining and thank you for throwing in your comments and your tips and your other tools that we didn't have on the list. 
you're watching this in the replay. Thanks so much. If you haven't already, we'd love for you to subscribe to the Ditch That Textbook YouTube channel. So if you're watching this on that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm pointing down. I don't know why. Maybe it's down there. I think it's down there. Um, so make sure that you subscribe for future live videos. And then of course, Holly and I both do have um, Facebook pages and groups where you can catch live videos as well. Holly, do you want to give a shout out for that real fast in case oh, people want to follow it? Thanks, Matt. So if you go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash infused classroom, Facebook, we're doing all kinds of stuff there. Of course, my blog, hollyclark.org and your Facebook Yes, that's right. Mine is facebook.com slash ditch that textbook. And so you can go check those out if you're interested. So I think that pretty much wraps us up here. So if you've been watching this, we really, really appreciate it. And thank you so much. And we will catch you on the next video. Thanks Bye. and take care.